Last May, I went to Athens, Greece and met up with Salvador Levy, a Greek Jew still living in Greece. Hello, I'm Salvador Levy and I come from Greece and I'm one of the few Jews that exist in Greece now. When I say few, I mean about 5,000 in all of Greece. And uh, my descendants, my background, let's say, my mother is Sephardic, my father is Romani. You very well know what Sephardic is and in the area that today is Greece they came after the expulsion in 1492. Uh, the Romani, you may not know, they are the ancient Jews. Jewish communities that exist here beginning from the 3rd century BC, so 2,300 years at least. Mm. Jews exist in Greece for thousands of years. Uh, we say that the first Greeks, that we, the first Jews that we have evidence of living in Greece come from the 3rd century BC. Uh, so until now we are almost 2,300 years. Uh, we know many communities, more than 10 communities, that exist in the first century of the Common Era. Those that exist until today and have a name and have an identity and are until today called Romani Jews. Mm -hmm. ah. This square is called Abyssinia Square, mm -hmm. really. But everyone, that, nobody knows Abyssinia Square, nobody knows this. Oh. Everybody knows this square as Yusurum Square, from the last name of Elias Yusurum, who oh. opened the first antique shop in the square. Oh, Not only that, that it became a hit, a best-selling yeah. shop or something, because he was closed on Sabbath, and he oh. was open on Sundays. On Sundays, in those times, we're talking now 1920s, Yeah. in those times, Everything was closed on Sunday. Oh. This room was open. <laughs> yeah. So everybody was saying, I go to your room, let's go to your room. Oh but my God, again, yeah. Again, for all that, it's Belle Epoque, Athens. Eh? To go on a Sunday to look at antiques and maybe buy something, a little thing or something. Later, more and more and more opened, and all this square today is known as your room square. Okay, this is the synagogue of the Jewish community of Athens. Hmm. It was built in 1935. And until very recently, it was the only synagogue of Athens. Mm. Uh, now there is a second synagogue uh, by Chabad, operated by Chabad. Mm. Chabad is in Greece almost 20 years now, oh. maybe a little less, mm -hmm. maybe 19 years, mm -hmm. almost 20. Uh, but the synagogue, they, it, it's recent. Now why? We have said this many times. Why does Chabad come here? They opened a kosher restaurant that they have until today. Mm. And they don't open a synagogue yet because the community is so small. Yeah. That is the reason. Uh, now we have also visitors, a lot of visitors, and very peacefully, let's say, a second synagogue exists in Athens. There was room for this, the, mm. the opportunity uh, allowed it. Yeah. Uh, but until two, three years ago, this was the only synagogue. Okay, let's see around. L look at, look at mm. how modern the decoration is. Yeah. It's made of, out of bronze, the decoration in front in the Arona Codes. Yes, we have the stained glass that you just saw. Yeah. Nice and behind. But yeah. On the wall, we see hang the mechitza of the original synagogue. Oh. Uh, all communities of Greece, all Jewish communities, are what an American or a Northern European would call Orthodox. Mm, yeah. So this is the case. Uh, we just call it Judaism, and it's the same as it would be five, six centuries oh. ago. Some of the things. Yeah. Okay costume of the rabbi of Athens oh. in the 40s, 1940s, eh, during the German occupation, I think. And oh. uh, this was is white because he wore this for Rosh Hashanah, Sankai, oh. Sankai, Yom Kippur, and Simchat Torah. Yeah. This is Pesach. Interesting for me to record. Look, oh. up there, those two inscriptions are in Greek yeah. with Hebrew alphabet. Written with the Hebrew alphabet. Greek language. Oh, Greek language. Okay, I got it. If yeah. you read this Hebrew, these words in Hebrew, you will not understand what they mean. If you mm. know Hebrew, you write Hebrew, you write Yiddish with the Hebrew alphabet, no? Yiddish with the Hebrew. I guess I never thought okay, it through. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Hebrew is written with the, with the, sorry, Yiddish is written with the Hebrew alphabet. Okay. Yeah. I and mean, it's almost German. Yeah, I heard that. It's almost German with a little bit of uh, Polish, oh. with a little bit of Hebrew. And written with the Hebrew alphabet. Mm. The Sephardic Jews speak another language, Latino, Latino. <gasps> yes. Almost Spanish. It's like, yeah, does it combine Hebrew and Spanish? Yeah, kind of? but 95% Spanish, 5% oh. Hebrew. Oh, gosh. Yes. <laughs> if you speak Spanish, you can understand Latino, it's very similar. Oh. Uh, okay, 
how they write it with the Hebrew alphabet. Ladino is written oh, with the Hebrew alphabet. Okay. And it's almost Spanish. Yeah. It's almost the Spanish language written with Hebrew alphabet. Oh. Here, the local Jews, why yeah. do they speak Hebrew? No, no Greek. They spoke Greek, obviously. Of course. Oh, okay. They had a few yeah. Hebrew words in it, like everybody. Yeah. Like the Sephardic and the Eskenazi. Yeah. Because they read the Torah. They have a few Hebrew words. Yeah. And they write this Greek, Greco Judaic language. Oh. They write it with Hebrew characters. Oh. So this is the Haggadah yeah. of Pesach. Does it have like a name? Like how there's yes. like Ladina? Yeah. Yevanik. With... Yevanik? It's called Yevanik. Oh. Inscriptions of synagogues. Ancient oh. synagogues in Greece. Not only ancient synagogues, but the word synagogue is a Greek word. Hmm? Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, look, this. Gamma, Omega, Gamma, Eta. Gogi, Synagogi. Oh. Wait, yeah. so that, the because people use the word synagogue all over. Yes. It's from Greek? Yes. Ah. Oh. Before the war, many communities. Yeah. Look, once we are occupied, this happens to the Jews. The Bulgarian, ah, first of all, we, we they, uh, separate Greece in three zones of occupation. This part becomes Italian zone of occupation. Ah. This part becomes Bulgarian zone of occupation, and this part, plus some little pieces, as you see, becomes the German zone of occupation. First, the Bulgarian zone of occupation brings the Jews here in Komotini, and from here, 4,706 people go to Treblinka. Ah. Uh, second, all the Jews of Greece are gathered either in Athens if they're lower and from Athens to Salonika or directly to Salonika and Salonika becomes the center of the prosecution and the center of the uh, uh, ex motion of the Jews towards the camps. Uh, uh, apparently they gather yeah. them, they gather the Jews of Rhodes. Oh, they I got them, it. They send yeah. them with ships to Athens. They gather the Jews of Corfu, they send them oh. with ships in Athens. They gather the Jews of Athens. All together with trains have to go to Salonika. Uh, they gather them there, close them in a ghetto, yeah. and wait in line to get in one of the trains. Oh. From Thessaloniki, all the Jews Wait, of but Greece, this is still Greece. Greece, Greece. Yeah, okay. Yeah. From Thessaloniki, Salonika, 57,653 Jews go to Auschwitz. Wow. Okay. So those two together yeah. are about 65,000. Wow. Are yes. the people that went uh, to the camps. From, the, from that number, uh, 1,900 returned to Athens after the war. Returned to the hometowns had no point at the time. They returned to Athens where Joint was there, the Joint Distribution Committee, mm -hmm. and people that they could ask where the relatives are and other things. Anyway, they didn't have a house anymore in the hometown. They didn't have... Most of the people they knew would have died. Yeah. So the survivors, most of them returned to Athens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The upper one is real, original. His oh. name is Aser David. Okay. The same guy under is called Stamatopoulos Dimitrios. Oh. And he's Christian Orthodox. Oh. So you see? Yeah. And the document is official because the, the police makes it. This is not a fraud, this is not a fake ID. Oh, okay. It's a fake name on an official document. Wait, and what did people use them for? You would use it if Kistapo stops you. Who are you? Your oh. ID. Then you show an ID which is Christian. Very good. Okay, go home. Oh, so they were like hiding that they were Jewish. Of course they yeah. were hiding that they were yeah. Jewish. No, no, I got it now. Oh, and this is... Hmm, it worked that, that though? That was the point. To yeah. hide your, Jude your Jewishness. Yeah. If it worked very much. My grandfather oh, had one of those, for example. Oh. Of course, if it worked. One th about 1,200 IDs like those were issued. Oh. Angel Ever, the chief of police of Greece, is in Yadvasem now, of course, right to yeah. Gentel. Uh, his name is written there because he helped very much. If it, if it worked, it worked very much. Yeah, wow. <laughs> of course. Uh -huh. This war, look, this war has some strange things. The Second World War, I mean. Yeah. In every war, you see your enemy coming and you understand because he has a uniform of the enemy, you have the other uniform. And we know what we're playing. We're playing the game of war. Yeah. If I don't kill you, you will kill me. We have weapons, yeah. etc. This, this war, however, is civilians in city, and the army decides who is the enemy by your papers. The credential becomes uh, very important. Let me yeah. see your paper. Oh, you Jewish. Then you are enemy. Come with me. Uh, I arrest you. So if you have a... okay. exactly. Let me see your paper. Ah, you are uh, Christian. 
Okay, go to your work. Mm. This has never happened. To, to identify your enemy from his credentials, from papers. Yeah. <laughs> what it means to be Jewish? Uh, I would say that to me, and I say this for all the Jews of Greece also, it wouldn't mean so much what you do, how much you participate in the action of um, religion, but more than that, how much you participate in the action of the community. So it's more a communal thing and more a social thing and more a thing of a people than a religion. Understand the difference? Yeah. So this is what being Jewish means to me. I am Jewish, want it or not. If I choose to practice or practice less or practice none at all, I'm still Jewish. And, and the Greek Jews are not very religious, but have very strong identity and very strong Zionism before Israel. Eh? Uh, cool. One more thing. Can you show the menorah and explain that again? Of course. Yeah. Uh, it's very unique to Greek. Like, yes. I feel like no one would know that. Okay. This is a little menorah, as everyone sees. Eh? Menorah, everybody knows. But this particular menorah is from the ancient synagogue of Corinth, from the 3rd century of the Common Era. It has the menorah here, as you see, which is, um, now it's jewelry, okay, but it's a copy from the actual synagogue of um, Corinth, where it's made of marble. And underneath, and that's the most, maybe, interesting, is that it has a little sign, I don't know if it, it can be seen in the, in the video, eh? Yeah, no, I can. That says, Synagogue of the Hebrews, Synagogi Evreon. The word synagogy, ancient Greek word, exists in the ancient synagogue, eh? and we mm. use it until today. Synagogy, from the verb synago, to bring together. Mm. What the Jewish community did, is what I was explaining. Oh, that's what I meant. The Jewish community wanted something as a trademark. Yeah, a trademark, okay. You see, uh, then you have to choose something that is not only Jewish, but Greek Jews. Oh, and okay. this little inscription is in Greek. Oh, it's okay. It mentions the word synagogue, which is a Greek oh, word. So this is okay. a very good example of Greek Judaism, because Magen David is global, it's universal. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So I did end up at the end of my tour getting this necklace, um, which I absolutely love. Um, I'm so happy that I got it. Um, thanks for watching um, my video that um, when I met with Salvador Levy and he showed me around the Greek community and the history of the Greek Jews, highly recommend visiting Athens and the other commu Greek um, Jewish communities in Greece. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Click the like button and click to subscribe to follow for more content.